distant, I'm sorry, distant campuses. So, so anyway, there we have it. So there's your kind of insider tip. So like I know uh, UW Eau Claire is uh -huh. building a Mayo Clinic right on, on oh. campus okay. to capture the nursing, so I'm assuming maybe they'll have sure. some type of yeah. you know, uh, collaboration yes. with each other. Mm -hmm. And just because it's provisional doesn't mean it's a bad program, but you know, at the end of you want to make sure that you're going to pass the exam. That's the key. Um, I just cost of PA school is pretty expensive overall tuition. I looked through, you know, a pretty comprehensive list, roughly seventy-five thousand to one hundred twenty-five thousand. Um, however, here I don't. You probably can't see this. It didn't. I didn't blow it up enough, but. The total at UW Madison, their PA program was thirty-nine thousand five hundred dollars. That's like very reasonable. Whereas I went to school at Rosalind Franklin, and theirs is annual cost is fifty-three thousand dollars a year. So currently, so there's a wide range, a wide range, I guess. Is the, um, you know, you're you're making, you're doing well uh, financially, but. It, to get there, you know. Um, PA school admissions. So what's it take to get into PA school? Again, we're kind of working backwards, right? Um, applicate, your application is going to look at your prerequisite courses, healthcare experience, shadowing, and entrance exams. Um, there's a bunch of prerequisite courses. We're going to kind of breeze through some of this. You do need healthcare experience. Um, generally, they want over 2,000 hours of healthcare experience. And they kind of divide it up healthcare experience versus patient care experience. Basically, are you involved in healthcare but not touching a patient, or are you, you know, more interactive with a patient? Um, shadowing is part of this too. Not only do you want to maybe work as an EMT to get some patient contact hours as, for physicians to get into PA school, um, but you also need to shadow a PA and show that you know what the role of the PA is. Um, this is important, not just one day, spend some time um, over breaks. Furthermore, I would recommend shadowing professionals in multiple different areas of healthcare. Shadow a physician, shadow a nurse practitioner, shadow a PA, shadow a physical therapist. I mean, shadow a bunch of people so that when you get to an interview, you can say, I shadowed all these professionals and of all of them, I want to be a PA because this is Whatever. You can explain that you know the difference between the different professionals and further articulate why you want to be a PA or something else. Um, at Aspirus, you can um, shadow here and you go, again, we're getting short on time, but nonetheless, uh, careers, students at Aspirus, job shadows, you can follow those links. Um, there's like an application so that you can shadow there. Um, at Marshall Clinic, you go to the Division of Education, um, and there's someone that you can email. They do have some high school programs there, actually, that look really cool. There is a PA school entrance exam, evidently. You can either do the GRE, or there's a new PA CAT, kind of like you've heard of maybe the MCAT for medical school. Some, however, require nothing at all. Um, this is a cool link. We'll come back to it in the future if we need to. So, point is, to get into PA school, you need a hefty background in the sciences in undergrad, right? Biology, chemistry, physics, psychology, those types of things. Um, you also need patient care experience, 2,000 hours. That's almost like a year of full-time work. Um, so you need to find a way to get patient care experience, and that's what you should be thinking about now. You know, can I take an EMT class? Can I become a phlebotomist? Can I work as a scribe? Different things you can do now over you know, your breaks, breaks between um, years when you're in college. Different things you can do. So I wanted you to hear from some of my colleagues uh, what they would recommend. So what advice would you give to a high school PA student that's looking at going to PA school? I would recommend that they look into both the college they want to go to and the PA program that they're interested in. Um, call it, every college is very different. Some colleges have programs that lead you towards the PA or medical path and some do not. Mm -hmm. So making sure that you know kind of what classes you need to take, 
uh, over the course of four years to have what you need to apply to the program. Um, and again, every program is different, so the requirements for the program are generally kind of the same, but some want more and some want less. So uh, every program does offer or does tell their potential students what classes they need to take. Um, so just having kind of a general map in college to make sure you get all those classes in. Uh, the other thing I would say is that experience is really important and direct patient care experience is really the key to, to knowing if the PA program and PA profession is right for you. Um, the best way to do it is really to get your hands dirty as a CNA, in my opinion. But um, I also got experience as a clinical research coordinator of lung cancer. So I worked with patients to make sure they got all the studies they did for the cancer research. Um, so there's no right way to do it, but there are ways to really experience whether this is the right career path or not. Where did you do the research? Was that through your undergrad program? Yep, uh, through UW-Madison. I ended up getting a job as a student there. And then uh, after I graduated college, I worked for a year with them uh, in the law department. So I thought that was good advice. You know, go to the PA program that you maybe are interested in, research PA programs, see what their prerequisites are so that you make sure that you're getting all those prerequisites in undergrad. So what advice would you give to uh, here's Tony. Tony works in... Uh, so I would say get your CNA license, because um, then you're you know, the most, inner, most intimate patient care experience, you know, really taking care of people to see if you like it. And regardless of what field you go into as a PA, um, you'll always use those CNA skills. To this point, you know then whether or not you like working with patients, um, and also then you your learning skills that you can apply in the future. I uh, so this is Carla. I interviewed her in a coffee shop yesterday. Oh no, we can't play Carlos. Rats. Carla said to Shadow. And I would definitely recommend getting as much experience as you can. Um, whatever interests you, whether it's being a medic or an EMT or working in the ED, get as much experience as you can. Any questions? Any questions about what I do day to day? Actually, what's the day in your, uh, your job? A day in my job. So uh, I start at eight. Um, I start seeing patients. Uh, I work alongside, you know, as a physician assistant, we do work alongside physicians. Um, so generally, uh, when I start my day, a physician's already there, and a second. PA, actually I work with a nurse practitioner during the days generally, comes in around 10 o'clock, and then we kind of start adding more people on as the day gets busier and busier. Um, every day is different, uh, in the emergency department at least. Um, you know, and you kind of, part of my job as a PA is to really keep the emergency department running when the physician is drawn to the more critical situations. You know, when we have a trauma that comes in, um, then the fellowship trained emergency physician really needs to tend to that patient. Or when we have a patient who comes in that's pulseless and not breathing, needs CPR, needs intubation, well, I'm trained to do that. Really, the physician is best suited to tend to that, that patient. So my job is to keep everything else running. You know, keep seeing the running noses and the coughs and the abdominal pain and chest pain and so on. Um, and then I see generally, um, around 16 patients a day, so you know the goal is about two per hour. Um, it's a lot, and even though you know in the examples I gave, you know I went through everyone one at a time. That's not the way it is. You know, you go in and see a patient, come back to my desk, write the orders, then go see a different patient, come back to my desk, write orders for them, go see if the first patient's information is going to get, then go and so on and so forth. So it's kind of um, requires a lot of. Uh, a lot of irons in the fire, if you will. You know, you're really moving a lot. It's very dynamic. Um, and then, generally, my shift ends around four, and I'm generally there finishing up charts for about an hour. So, do you want to work today? 
I do not. You do. No. I was scheduled to work today, but it's not the kind of place where you can just like take off an hour, you know. <laughs> so uh, I switched with it. Yeah. But actually, tomorrow's my last day in the emergency department. I'm moving to cardiac surgery on Thursday. So. I was just going to ask how long you anticipate staying in emergency. Yeah. So I was actually, cardiac surgery was my first uh, job out of PA school. I was there for over six years. And then I um, got married at the time. My husband kind of had a, an unpredictable schedule. I had an unpredictable schedule in cardiac surgery. You know, you just didn't know if this is surgical schedule going to be eight hours or are we going to be here for 12 hours today? And then there was call on top of it. Um, so I switched to emergency medicine where it's, um, you know, shift work and you know, you know when you're coming and when you're going. Uh, so it was nice. I broadened my scope of practice. And, but now, I've done that and ready to go back to cardiac surgery for something different. Yes? So how easy uh, is it for you to travel in your profession? Like, um, um, like if you wanted to move to like Illinois or down south? Oh, great. Yeah, so it's very easy, generally speaking. Um, you know, that's a nice thing about being a PA is that there are PA jobs everywhere. You can definitely go anywhere. The, the little challenge, if you will, is that you do need to then, the states are who really um, licensing. So, you know, you take a national licensing test, but then you have to get a state license as well. So, the only holdup, if you will, would be then, like, the state licensing. You just have to get a license in that state. Yeah. Great question. Any other questions? So, let's say mm -hmm. you want to become a doctor. Yes. Do they credit you all these years? Thank you PA? so much for asking that question. I do not have to tell you how many times a day a patient says to me, so when are you going to be a doctor? I'm not. If I wanted to be a doctor, I would have gone to medical school. I didn't want to do that. I became a PA. So no, it's not like I've only gone to half of medical school and I can go back and go to the second half of medical school. It's not like that. You guys are so much more educated now. See? Thank you for asking that question. It's not like that at all. I would have to go back and like, start all over again. Um, that's a great question. Common, common misperception, yes. Thank you for asking that. When are you going to be a doctor? I'm not. I actually, that was my plan though, I guess. I didn't really tell you about my history. Um, I went to undergrad. My plan was always to be a doctor. And I went to undergrad. I majored in biology. Pre-medicine actually was a track there. I minored in Spanish. Always a great idea to get Spanish is a second language if you're interested in any healthcare field, um, or really anything in general. And then um, I actually submitted my first round of applications to med school, started getting back to secondaries. I was like, no, I don't want to do this. I didn't want to commit to four years of medical school. Um, I didn't want to commit to one specialty, being a cardiologist for the rest of my life. I just didn't know what, where life would take me, especially you know, being a female, maybe wanting to have a family someday. Um, I just wanted a little bit more flexibility than I thought med school would offer me. And so um, then I changed my mind, decided to go to PA school. However, um, it was really too late in the process. PA school is very competitive. And so um, I decided then to go to graduate school. I got a Master of Public Health, which took an additional two years. Um, master's programs are generally fairly affordable. Um, you know, you can be a teaching assistant or something like that, and you know, they'll pay for your tuition. So it was time well spent. I got an extra master's degree. Um, it's education that I pull from all the time um, when I'm educating my patients. And um, then I applied to PA school. Did that extra master's help you for your pay? For my pay, no. no. They don't, they don't Not in. Not in my current job. Now, if I wanted to apply to a job, you know, maybe like an uh, administrative health department or something like that, yeah, but, um, no, didn't really in this situation. <laughs> I would say, however, it probably made me a more competitive candidate. And for PA schools. Any other questions? It was a pleasure to meet you all. Um, I will, if you ever are interested in shadowing, I do certainly invite people to shadow me. I, again, I won't be in the ER any longer, but um, cardiac surgery is a pretty cool place to come and shadow as well. So um, you're always welcome. I'll send an email address to you.